Ambassador Zeke Thompson stood at the viewport of the United Earth diplomatic vessel Olive Branch, his keen blue eyes scanning the vastness of space. The massive Eegzar Keth warship loomed before them, its jagged silhouette a stark contrast to the sleek human craft. Zeke's salt and pepper hair was neatly combed, his tailored suit crisp and immaculate. At fifty-five he was the picture of human dignity and poise. Well, gentlemen, he said, turning to face his team, it seems our new alien friends are fond of dramatic entrances. Doctor. Raj Patel. The team's xenobiologist chuckled nervously. I'd say their ship design leaves little doubt about their intentions, Zeke. Now, now, Rajay Zeke said with a wink, let's not judge a book by its cover. Or, in this case, a potentially hostile alien species by their fondness for sharp angles. Captain Marcus Chen, the Olive Branch's commanding officer, frowned. Ambassador, I must advise caution. The Exar Keth have a reputation for aggression. This meeting could be a trap. Zeke nodded, his expression turning serious. I appreciate your concern, Marcus. But that's precisely why we're here. If there's even a chance for peaceful dialogue, we must take it. The ship's AI, Arya, chimed in. Ambassador, incoming transmission from the Exar Keth vessel. Thank you, Arya, Zeke replied. Let's see what our new neighbors have to say, shall we? The view screen flickered to life, revealing the imposing figure of the Igzar Keth ambassador. Standing nearly eight feet tall, with iridescent scales and piercing yellow eyes, Ambassador K. Zoth was an intimidating sight. Greetings, humans, K. Zoth's voice boomed, a hint of disdain in his tone. I trust you understand the precariousness of your situation. Zeke stepped forward, a warm smile on his face. Ambassador K. Zoth, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I must say, your ship is quite impressive. The way it catches the light of the nearby star is simply breathtaking. K. Zoth blinked, momentarily taken aback by Zeke's cheerful demeanor. Your admiration is irrelevant, human. We are here to discuss terms of your species' surrender. Surrender Zeke's eyebrows shot up in mock surprise. My goodness. D. There seems to be some misunderstanding. We were under the impression this was a friendly meet and greet between galactic neighbors. Perhaps we could start with something simpler. I'd love to hear about Exar Keth cuisine. I've always believed that breaking bread together is the first step towards lasting friendship. K. Zoth's scales rippled in what appeared to be confusion. You dare make light of this situation. Our warship could obliterate your vessel in seconds. Zeke's smile never wavered, and deprive yourself of the pleasure of our company. I sincerely hope not. Tell me, Ambassador, have you ever tried Earth's delicacy known as pizza? I assure you, it's worth staying your hand for. Behind Zeke, Raj and Marcus exchanged glances, a mix of admiration and concern on their faces. K. Zoth's eyes narrowed. Enough of this foolishness. You will submit to Ixar Keth authority or face annihilation. My dear K. Zoth, Zeke said, his tone suddenly serious but still warm, let's consider this logically. If your intention was truly to destroy us, you would have done so already. The fact that we're having this conversation suggests you're open to alternatives, so why don't we explore those? I propose a cultural exchange. Your finest warriors and our top diplomats. What do you say? For a moment, silence filled both vessels. Then, to everyone's surprise, Kazov let out a sound that might have been a laugh. You are. Not what I expected, human. Very well. We will consider your proposal. Prepare to receive a delegation. As the transmission ended, Marcus turned to Zeke, his eyes wide. Ambassador, with all due respect, what the hell was that? Zeke's grin was triumphant. That, my friend, was the opening move in a game of galactic chess. Now, let's prepare a welcome our guests won't soon forget. Hours later, the Olive Branch's main conference room had been transformed. Earth delicacies from various cultures filled long tables, the aroma of spices and herbs filling the air. Soft classical music played in the background, and holographic displays showcased the beauty and diversity of Earth's landscapes. As the Asar Keth delegation materialized in the designated transport area, Zeke stepped forward, arms opened wide. Welcome, honored guests. We're so thrilled to have you aboard. Please, make yourselves comfortable. K. Zoth, now standing in the room with three other Zarketh officials, looked around in bewilderment. What? What is the meaning of this? Raj, 
who had been nervously adjusting his glasses, spoke up. We've prepared a sampling of Earth's cultures for you, Ambassador Kezoth. We believe that understanding is the key to peace. Marcus, still wary but following Zeke's lead, gestured to the displays. And these are images of our homeworld. We thought you might be curious about the planet you're considering for surrender. Kezoth's gaze lingered on a hologram of the Grand Canyon. Your world is. Not unimpressive, he admitted grudgingly. Zeke clapped his hands together. Excellent. Now, shall we begin with some refreshments? I highly recommend the sushi. It's a personal favorite. As the evening progressed, the atmosphere in the room gradually shifted. The Exar Keth, initially stiff and suspicious, began to relax. Kezoth, in particular, seemed to develop a fondness for wasabi, much to Rajay's fascination. The burning sensation, Kezoth said, his usual growl softened. It reminds me of the volcanic springs of our homeworld. Zeke, ever the attentive host, leaned in. I'd love to hear more about your home, Kezoth. It sounds like a remarkable place. And so, over plates of earth food and glasses of wine which the SR Keth approached with caution but growing enthusiasm, stories were shared. Kezoth spoke of Igzar Keth history, of great battles and heroic leaders. In turn, Zeke regaled them with tales of human perseverance, of overcoming adversity through cooperation and ingenuity. As the night wore on, Marcus pulled Zeke aside. I don't know how you're doing it, Ambassador, but it's working. They're actually enjoying themselves. Zeke's eyes twinkled. The universe is vast and often terrifying, Marcus. Sometimes all anyone really wants is to feel understood and appreciated, even if they have scales and a fondness for spiky architecture. Suddenly, Arya's voice came through Zeke's earpiece. Ambassador, we're detecting a massive energy buildup in the XR Keth ship's weapon systems. Zeke's smile never faltered, but his eyes met Marcus's with silent understanding. Turning back to Kay's oath, he raised his glass. A toast, my friend. To new beginnings and unexpected friendships. Kay Zoth hesitated, then raised his glass as well. Two. New beginnings, he echoed, a note of uncertainty in his voice. As they drank, Zeke casually remarked, you know, Kezoth, I couldn't help but notice your ship seems to be experiencing some sort of power fluctuation. I do hope everything's all right. Kezoth's eyes widened in surprise. How did you? Oh, just a hunch, Zeke said smoothly. You see, we humans have a saying, keep your friends close and your potential annihilators closer. We've been monitoring your systems since you arrived. Purely as a safety precaution, you understand. The room fell silent, tension thick in the air. Kezoth's hand moved towards what was presumably a weapon, but Zeke continued, his voice calm and friendly. Now, we could go down the path of mutually assured destruction. It would be terribly exciting, I'm sure. But consider this, we've just spent a delightful evening together, learning about each other's cultures. We've broken bread, shared stories. Are you really prepared to throw all that away? Kezoth's hand froze. You. You knew we were planning to attack? All this time? Zeke shrugged. We suspected. But we chose to give peace a chance. And I believe it's paid off. Wouldn't you agree? For a long moment, Kezoth said nothing. Then, slowly, he began to laugh. It was a deep, rumbling sound that filled the room. In all my years, I have never encountered a species quite like yours, Zeke Thompson. You faced annihilation with a smile and offers of friendship. Well, Zeke grinned we find it's much harder to vaporize someone after you've shared a good meal with them. Kezoth nodded, a new respect in his eyes. Indeed, perhaps, perhaps there is much our people could learn from each other. My thoughts exactly, Zeke said, clapping Kezoth on the back and trying not to wince at the hardness of the XR Keth scales. Now, how about we discuss that cultural exchange program? I'm thinking we start with a galactic food festival. I have a feeling your chefs and ours could come up with some truly spectacular dishes. As the two ambassadors began to plan, Raj leaned over to Marcus. Did we just avert an interstellar war with sushi and small talk? Marcus shook his head in amazement. Welcome to diplomacy in the cosmic age, doctor. Apparently the pen is mightier than the photon torpedo. And so, as the olive branch continued to drift in the vastness of space, an unlikely friendship was forged. The Exar Keth, who had come seeking conquest, left with recipe books and promises of future visits. 
It was a small step for two species, but a giant leap for galactic peace. As Zeke watched the SR Keth ship depart, now Sand's menacing glow of charged weapons, he allowed himself a moment of quiet pride. Humanity had faced its first major extraterrestrial challenge not with force, but with wit, charm, and an open hand of friendship. Well done, gentlemen, he said to his team. I think we've earned ourselves a slice of that leftover pizza. As they made their way to the galley, Zeke couldn't help but chuckle. The universe, it seemed, was full of surprises. And humanity, with its peculiar blend of courage, creativity, and culinary delights, was ready to face them all. The cosmic stage was set, and humanity had made its debut with flair. The stars, once a distant dream, now seemed like the beginning of a grand adventure. And Zeke Thompson, ambassador extraordinaire, was ready to lead the charge armed with nothing more than a warm smile and a good bottle of wine. 